Hello, new sim release out today. It's 048B and there's a few new things to show you. So let's jump into the sim and I'll show you what these look like. One of the first things we fixed was the turbine blades again. Once again, the, the blades seemed to fly off. I thought I'd fixed it. I think because actually I'd fixed the blades so they couldn't actually move. They could just rotate on one axis. But I think what was happening is the colliders within the multiple collider maps were rubbing against each other and this was forcing movement out, although it was blocked from moving it was somehow just going off so I left it running over eight hours and the the props were like way over in the distance hopefully uh, that's fixed now but if props start floating away please let me know anyway the big feature I want to tackle this time was the field of view the field of views always felt a little bit restricted and it, it was set to about 60 degrees which I worked out was about the same as a 2.8 millimeter FPV lens which is a little bit narrow and we tend not to use those anymore even the 2.1 is feeling a bit narrow now and we're kind of using a 1.8 as standard. My original idea here was to go with what's called a full screen post-processing effect so I'd render the image and then I'd put it into a post-processing effect which would uh, distort at the right places to give it that. Uh, the only way to describe it is if you've ever looked for an FPV camera instead of the props being like that you'll see them like that because as it it sort of goes in a circular distortion field so the edges go away. I became worried at this point. I actually had it running um, although it wasn't looking particularly good but full screen processing means you render the entire image you take that image you reprocess it and you put it out again and that is like two passes at the same thing and I've always been very keen on this running on you know old crappy laptops and, and stuff that won't run the, the sort of big commercial sims. So I decided to go with something else. What um, I went back and did, because I was having problems just expanding the field of view that sort of shrunk backwards and looked weird, so I went back in and tried to model the physical camera, especially the size of the sensor, and doing that I managed to get it back to how it looked with a 2.8 lens, and so what I then did is apply different fields of view on it. So if you press V now, what we have here is the 2.8mm lens. If I press V, um, it'll go to 2.1, and then 1.8, 1.66, and all the way back to 2.8. And you will notice I've done some changes on the camera position, So because basically I was pulling the motors. On 2.8 you just got the little corner of a prop there, um, and as they come back on 2.1, 1.8, 1.66, you'll see that the uh, props come back into view again and you, you will see some distortion in the way it works especially on the, the higher uh, lenses so as per everything um, I ask you guys to to let me know how it feels for you if it feels right um, if this is the sort of thing you like personally I've noticed I'm able to get a better view for flying lower I can see more of the ground below me so it's easier and sort of getting through gaps where it sort of it opens up a little bit more it, it seems to work for me. The the other thing I did in, in conjunction with that is about the throttle sensitivity. I noticed um, and especially when you're using a high powered quad so the throttle multiply all the way up is that it's very hard to keep a stable hover and I actually went through three different attempts at looking at this, one of which was a throttle expo which I didn't like and the way an expo curve works anyway it doesn't work because the where the throttle multiplier is different the curve would have to be in a different place and that's hard to work out. But what I ended up doing is kind of trying to model the way I believe props uh, spin up. So if you go from props not spinning at all and you push your throttle all the way up, the, the although the the motor is very quick to respond, it can't get from zero to full throttle or, or through full rotation on the prop instantly. There is an, an amount of time it takes to spin that up because of you know physics and resistance and stuff. So what I try to do is model that so whenever you're accelerating um, and it depends on where your throttle is, there's, there's, it's not instant. You don't get that instant power. There is a small ramp up about the speed and that seems to work quite well. So if I sort of fly here uh, one thing I notice is it's a little bit easier to come into landing. So let me try one now. So I'll do it in my normal way. I'd sort of come down here and um, basically plonk it down like that. And it's the same story I find on the uh, sort of pre construction house. Basically, if you sort of can land it and then you can take off again, which was almost impossible last time but you've got a little bit more fine control there. 
just to, to get it over, which I think it makes all the difference. I, I have to say it's still not that easy when you've got the full power on, but it's easier than it was before, and I think it reflects real life a little bit more. Again, it's not something I can show you easily. You'll, you'll have to just try it and see what you think. And as, as for everything, please give me feedback if you thought it was good or bad or, or whatever. Okay, next one, something that's uh, a bit divisive between people. And for me, I always thought, why would you want that? It's, it's silly, but people that want it are absolutely passionate about it. It's like a bit of them are missing. I'm talking about the crosshair. If you press N, a crosshair appears. And it's like, well, I know where the middle of the screen is, but loads of you guys have basically used the crosshair for lining stuff up and you want it on the sim and it's there now. Just to um, explain how bad my artistic skills is, you can see this is a circle with like six little squares around it. I had to get my buddy Andrew slash Frank from LDO to draw it for me because um, I completely failed. But yeah, you can line up on the ball now and it'd be fine. And uh, as far as my goes, you can turn it back off again, which is very nice. So I actually spent most time working on a feature that may only apply to me. And it's a real uh, demonstration of how feature creep can set in. It's it's about cycling the views from the online game. If we, um, if we go and play online first off. Here we are, we're on online game. And just to explain, we've still got all the normal things. So we can change the FPV camera lens. Um, we can turn the crosshair on and off, uh, all the normal stuff, so. Well, what I'm gonna do is join on my laptop here. There I am. And I'm playing on the laptop with uh, just a PS4 controller. And I was always interested when people were joining random rooms about what they were doing. And if I sort of go off past me, you sort of see me go there. I was like, what are they doing? I wanted to know. So I put a cycle view system in, and if you press J, the idea is jump you will now see um, your view in the remote player. And I should explain the reason this took so long was because it took like a day to change viewpoints between cameras and stuff. But then I was like, oh, well, it doesn't reflect the camera angle or the field of view. Um, and I, I want to see exactly what that player is seeing. So that turned into um, a sort of more day's work of being able to sort of pass information back and forth between the clients to make sure they're synced up. And that wasn't enough either, I wanted it live. I wanted to see stuff if people changed them. So if I was to jump back to the other view, which is here, and I was to do things like I could turn off my um, OSD thing, and if as my remote player I was to press um, V, it would report what camera I'm using. If I press return, I could see all these rates. And back on the laptop, if I were to change any of these, you'd see it reflected. And if I were to change the camera angle or change the viewpoint, you'd see that as well. You wouldn't see what it says unless you press the V on that one. And it says using 1.6. So yeah, I, I wanted to be super nosy in order to do that. But I also use that infrastructure to pass some other things. So previously I had trails on and off on two different keys and viewing quads as big on two different keys. So now what I've done, I've put down a single key to toggle it because when people join, they get that information from the other uh, players in the room and then all that information syncs up. So yeah, you can cycle through reviews of other players, which is probably useful for me so I can look at what people are doing because I'm nosy, but so the way it might be used, apart from the fact you might want to say, hey, how are they flying? What sort of rates they're using and stuff like that? What you can also do, and, and we've done it before, is if there's a group of you, you set the camera to one person, he does uh, some sort of trick, and then you go to the next person, that person tries to copy it, and you sort of have a game like that. Obviously, you need to be uh, in some sort of voice chat system to do that as well, which I'd always recommend if you're playing. Oh, that did lead me on to thinking about putting in some sort of text chat, just so you can send messages to each other. And anybody that's randomly uh, been on a game with me when I've just been sat on a floor may have seen messages popping up from me explaining what I was doing so if you see things like hello I'm just developing at the moment ignore me um, that's me having already built it into my development stuff. What didn't make it in this time were the cranes Nathan our 3D model has finished the crane design they look really nice but what he does he splits it into smaller components so I can basically put collider maps around them and when you're dealing with something which is like frames and crossing over uh, 
having it in small building blocks and being able to build it up is, is really handy. And so he's been working and it's kind of snowed under there. So it's still a couple of weeks there, but I thought I'd get this out in the meantime. And it leads me up into what would you like to see next? Two things in my list of to-dos really excite me at the moment. One of which is letting you guys be able to choose a plane instead of quad to fly. Um, as you saw way back when we put the plane in as an AI, I'd actually built it so I could fly it with the controller. Um, so there's there's not that much work, but there's a fair bit of changing, well, there's a fair bit of work to do. The, the code to fly is there. The code to easily swap between it is more complicated. So there's that. Or the other thing I really want to do is do the gamification uh, idea. So we, we've talked about quad ball and we've all seen the beach ball and quad ball is essentially... Uh, I'm hesitant to say Rocket League because Rocket League is essentially football with two cars on each side. So quad ball would be essentially trying to score in a goal with two quads beside trying to knock the beach ball or whatever ball in there. But I also had an idea for a single player game for those guys that aren't playing online that much, um, which would have levels and basically need you to manipulate things around a course in order to pass it and get to the next one. So if you'd like to sort of have your say and, and decide which one you want, then chuck it down on a comment below and I'll probably have a look and it will influence me and I'll work on that one. And of course, if you've got any other requests generally, down below is the link to the issues page where you can report bugs and you can say, hey, what about this? Uh, take a look at the ones I finished, take a look at the ones that are there, you might see something that's close to your thing and uh, you, in there I've commented if it will be in there, won't be in there if I'm still thinking about it, stuff like that. So this is out now and in the links down below you'll find the link to GitHub. If you're using the GitHub version this means basically you're taking a zip file, you're unzipping it and you're installing it and doing all that yourself. If you want the Steam version, uh, if you haven't got it already you can go and get it on Steam, it's $1.99. Um, but if you are on Steam, it means the updates come automatically. They will just be there when you put Steam up and it'll, it'll just work. So magic stuff there. I should say thanks for all the people that bought on Steam. Thanks to you, we've just broken even. So I haven't, I haven't now spent any money out on getting Steam and I'm about $3 ahead. Yay! And that was it for this release. Uh, look forward to the next release when we'll be doing some more stuff, hopefully soon. I try and work on this every week and do a little bit through my list of, of many to-dos. In the meantime, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. Don't forget to comment down below, subscribe if you haven't, and click on the little bell icon if you can find it. Until next time, catch you later. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.